Take the prince to the Simor Gate. Anahita! Don't you dare harm him! If you want Prince Hassan back, come and get him! Anahita! Anahita was here. She's taking Hassan to the Simor Gate. Then Artaban may be right about her wanting the throne. That thing above us. What is it? I'm not sure. 
But to get to Hassan and Anahita, we must destroy it. From this distance, that's not possible for either of us. Maybe Menelaus can help here. Varum sent him to the east to investigate the forest. I'll try to find him. I'll look for another way. brings you here, traveler? My allies and I are in pursuit of a traitor. Then you and the others are trapped here, too. Mount Calf has seen its share of travelers. Many are lost within the web of time's curse. Beware, warrior. Death and misery roam the citadel. I've seen my share of death. Even the most determined of warriors must be prepared. Take this. Its unique properties will aid you. Just know that each one is precious and can only be changed as a whack-whack tree. I'll make good use of this. Welcome. Well These amulets are very old. Older than me, certainly. <laughs> Each crafted by ancient magi. There are magi in Persepolis. They provide medicines. Those in Mount Calf possess more unique abilities. Though much has been forgotten. The longer Mount Calf remains imprisoned within this time paradox, the more we'll all forget our knowledge and way of life. You spoke of dangers within the city. Yes. Evil has had time to reach deep into Mount Calf. The cursed walk every part of the citadel. Each day there are more. Caused by these twists of time. At first, the anomalies and the time crystals all seemed strange. How can such a thing happen? No one is really sure. I'm certain it's tied to the Simurgh. The Simurgh protected all of Persia since time began. And as the Simurgh is god of time, when it vanished, then time became lost. I believe so. Those you encounter here are all trapped. Some tried to flee, but... But none of us can flee from time. 
Exactly so. If the Simurgh never returns, madness is the fate of us all. My amulets will aid your journey. Artaban. Sargon. Varum saw Anahita's guards, and he's in pursuit. As for me, I cannot continue. Time flows differently here. My mind is playing tricks on me. I can't discern the truth from the imaginary. Artaban. Thank you for being honest with me. Does this mean you're retreating? I'm not giving in just yet. I intend to serve until my last breath. After all, if Anahita really has changed loyalties, I believe you're short of a sparring partner. Let's warm up and review the basics. The basics, again. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Get in position. Show me how you chain ground attacks. Bear in mind you can redirect your next attack. Since you propel your opponent away with your last strike, that's the end of the chain. At close range, the sweep is good against smaller foes. You can also chain attacks afterwards. Airborne enemy cannot retaliate until they're back on their feet. Make use of that. Perfect to cripple agile enemies. Remember that you move forward with each attack. If you want to keep your distance, the sweep allows you to maintain your position. This doesn't suit your style, but some situations might require you to take such precautions. Precautions? What precautions? Hmm. My point exactly. Do you remember what I told you about propelling enemies up in the air? An airborne enemy cannot retaliate until they're back on their feet. <laughs> At least that got in your head. Let's go over your upward attacks. Use them to hit targets above you, but also to propel ground enemies in the air. A 
word of warning. Using the same upward attack twice in a row will lessen its effectiveness. You can also use an upward attack in a fighting combination. Be sure you're within range to strike. Following through with your attacks lets you stay in the action. Remember, Rashaba. Even a constant wind can carve a mountain. Now then, the forward slide. It's a chance to engage with an offensive advantage. Closing the distance, that suits me. Now let's combine everything. Chase the enemy mid-air after your upward attack. Vary your upward attacks. The same one twice in a row will not give you the same propulsion. I understand. Now for a specialty of yours. Acrobatic techniques. Ready for the next lesson? I'm always ready. You know about mid-air combinations. But there are other options. Try to reach the flying enemy. <laughs> Easy enough. You cannot chain attacks after this move but it should prove itself useful in certain situations. Alternatively, you can aim at enemies directly below you. Mind your position. That's a new way to lift up the enemy. You can send the enemy up even higher with aerial combinations, rather than sending them far away. This technique is valuable. You can save on time or throw your foe towards environmental hazards. Should you see a use for it, you can also send them crashing into the ground if you prefer. If I rush to the ground afterwards, I can maintain my flow before they get back on their feet. <laughs> For that, you know more than I do. I'm past the age to perform cartwheels at the fair. Huh. Very funny. Sargon. 
Remind me what our ancestors said about Athra. Athra flows through the universe and all living things. As much as weapons are the extension of our bodies, Athra is the extension of our will. Precisely. You've been listening. Athra can be channeled, intensified in your blades, until they are saturated with energy. Athra-charged attacks have several advantages. They can be destructive and even increase your focus. Look at you. I can see your Afra radiating. You've embraced the teachings of our ancestors. You've come a long way since I met you. But mastery is a never-ending journey. Now then, focus your Athra in the middle of a ground combination. Right in between moves. I'll give it a try. It's effective at annihilating enemy defenses. And if they do not break, they will certainly be weakened. Are you also able to do that in the air? I've practiced the technique to crush targets from above. I'll show you. These are strong attacks, and they knock back the enemy, marking the end of the combination. With proper training, Athra, the everlasting blaze, is yours to channel and control. No fighting style rules above all. The greatest combatants understand adaptability. Knowing your opponent's strengths is key to bringing them down. Take massive opponents, for example. They react differently to upward attacks. Give it a go. My strikes knock them back, but they're too heavy for me to lift them off the ground. Worse still, some opponents can ignore the recoil of your strikes because of their build or magic. You must be vigilant, as this means they can counterattack during your fighting combinations. Are there even worse enemies out there? None of my attacks have any effect on them. Not showing signs of pain doesn't mean they didn't get hurt. And careful what you wish for. The Citadel is full of mysteries. We're not out of the woods yet. And one more thing. Some enemies can recover while you're in the middle of your combination. Some can parry your next strike, cutting short your chain of attacks. You can find out for yourself. I see more and more the benefit of sending the enemy up in the air whenever that's possible. But you know that's not always possible. The best defense is not always offense.
A warrior who throws himself into the fray without defensive skills can win battles, but never wars. It's not the first time I've heard you say that. The goal is to structure combat in such a way as to hit the enemy without ever being hit in return. Your dodges, backwards and forwards, allow you to pass through enemy attacks and remain unscathed. Your last strike in a ground combination does not allow these actions. The price to pay for power. You can also end your combination early with a jump. While in the air, you can dodge by doing a backflip. Jumping while chaining attacks can also be used offensively. Parrying is the best defense against a head-on attack, turning the table in your favor. Not all attacks can be parried. If you're attacked from both sides, escaping is your best option. Parrying and dodging are not unique to us, Sargon. You already know this well, how recovering your balance after striking is when you're most vulnerable. After a successful dodge, the odds are in your favor. Launch a counter-attack right at that moment. I could do this all day long. Attacking from behind is also advantageous, and even more so when the enemy is already engaged. Careful against fast foes. They may turn around and punish your attempt at a sneak attack. Only if they can match my speed. You can kick while sprinting to propel the enemy into the background. And to make a loud entrance.
sprinting allows you to close the distance. You can still perform an upward attack. Artaban, I want to perfect my parrying technique. What do you have for me? The art of parrying requires perfect timing and faced head on. Get ready to parry. As you may have discovered, projectiles can also be returned to the sender. Do be vigilant. Once more, not all projectiles can be parried. Some moves give you better opportunities to counter. Learn to identify them and don't miss. Few enemies are able to recover from your rush of our counters. Actually, I named them downburst counters. Whatever you say. <laughs> I wish I could parry any attack. You know that's impossible, even for me. Fortunately, your senses are sharp. You'll know in advance if an attack can be parried or not. This isn't the whole day's lesson, right? There is a lesson in every failure. Did you see the effect of the hit you took? That's what you get when you miss a parry and pay for it. Getting hit this way is particularly dangerous, and your Athra focus takes a hit too. <sighs> well... I can feel it in my jaw now. Athra, the everlasting blaze, the unifying energy that interlaces the cosmic tapestry. It's the flame that gives and takes, embodying the very core of existence. Its presence and blessing extend throughout the cosmos. By discerning the cadence of Athra's flow, you can better navigate exercises and cures. Athra bestows stability and longevity upon those who seek its guidance. Sargon, your Athra burns brighter with each successful technique and can be unleashed all at once. Athra Surge, I've used it before. Get in position and start channeling it. Firstly, taking hits will break your focus and your Athra will dissipate. Riskier actions, such as parrying and launching charged attacks, are even more effective. Try to parry this enemy and see how fast you can gather your Athra.
Keep in mind that dodging is safer, but it will not build up Athra. Parry whenever you can. Let's talk about the Athra Surge. Since it has dodging properties, it's ideal for counterattacks. It's useful for breaking down defenses and can stop attacks that are usually, well, unstoppable. Every warrior prides themselves on developing their ultimate techniques, but you can also learn from them. Keep in mind that Athra ignites the soul, gracefully moving through unending transformation. Harnessing and charging its strength is merely a single expression of its multifaceted nature. Fine work. You now know all the basics. Don't forget, you can always visit for a training session. If you learn new moves, perhaps we can figure out together how to use them. Take this for starters. Good to see you. Good to see you. Any word of the others, Artaban? Some. Though I'm not sure what help it will be to you. Orod passed through quickly. He told me he had glimpses of Menelaus in combat and was off to find him. I'm certain Menelaus will manage. Yes. I said as much to Orod. In any case, Orod will have his back. You know, Sargon, I'm not entirely sure it's a good idea that we mortals remain separated. Well, it made the most sense to split up and find them. I agree. At least at the start. But this place has too many tricks. We should regroup. You may be right, Artaban. But I don't think it'll be long before we have Anahita cornered. I'm sure you, as much as the rest of us, are eager for her explanation. Hmm. I have to know why she's done such a thing. If there is anyone who can figure this out, it's you. I appreciate your faith in me. If there is anyone who... I appreciate your faith. Welcome. Welcome.
Did tell me you found a path to Prince Hassan and Anahita? No. Have you? It seems they avoided the depths of the citadel. Only the most abominable creatures lurk in the darkest reaches. I do my best work in the shadows, and Hassan is not here. Don't take unnecessary risks. Thanks for the warning, Rajin.